Descendants is a franchise where I can say the Watchers probably put way more effort into their fanfics and Tumblr essays than people who actually made the movie did into the actual world building of it all. Disney probably just wanted their own Ever After High. I'm sure Disney didn't expect this movie to take place in some magical alternate universe where all of the Disney movies take place in the exact same world and all within 20 years of each other for some reason. Implications? What are those? Seriously, look at this map. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. That they have the Northern Way Dynasty next to Neverland that apparently pays tribute to King Beast and Queen Belle. If you're wondering what else is beyond the Great Wall, apparently Mount Olympus and the Greek city-states are behind there, so apparently the barbarian invaders that plague the Northern Way Dynasty may have been the Olympians. Okay, that's not the most unrealistic thing I've heard. Let's be honest, Ares would totally send barbarians into Northern Way just for the hell of it. Then there's the plot. Sure, let's take all the villains, their sidekicks, their minions, and dump them into the Isle of the Lost with no magic, no Wi-Fi, no way out. Let's just do a line item veto and say, oh, if you're related to your villain, the villain can go there and their entire families can go there, but you as the Disney princess get privilege and not get to be thrown into an island full of criminals who want you dead. If a novelization is any indication, some of them were literally brought back from the dead to be thrown onto the island. And Oridon also sends the island food that's gone bad because the villains tell them to do that, and Oridon is too lazy to actually give them fresh food, so they just throw out their garbage at them. <sighs> Because apparently what we wanted in this quirky fantasy movie about school and magic and mediocre music is that we wanted the British Empire founding Australia. Now let's see how the sequel handles things. We open with Mal feeling nostalgic and hallucinating the good old days of mischief and mayhem. Despite the fact that she's standing in the middle of a press conference as a lady of a court of a 16-year-old king. Yep, that's what this story is going to be about. She's not even queen yet. Hell, she's not even out of school yet. One of these days, a bunch of angry rice farmers with a bone to pick with the ruling dynasty, who are children, are going to have a rebellion. Now, many fans have complained about Mal wanting to go back to the good old days on the Isle of the Lost. I can see how people can romanticize the past to absurd degrees. But honestly, it's a mockery of how paper-thin the barrier of the Isle of the Lost truly is. Mal practically waltzes in there. Why would you want to have a barrier be broken so easily from the outside when it holds the most dangerous villains, some of whom have godlike powers? Our main conflict involves Uma, the daughter of Ursula, wanting to break the barrier with her goons to take over Oridon and free the children of the Isle of the Lost. Why is she a villain again? Because she does mean things. And given how Oridon is cruel for setting up their personal penal colony, and of course they have a teenage boy be king with no bodyguards, no sense, and no anything, and keep dangerous magical artifacts that can unleash the apocalypse in a museum and, you know, not a replica of the original, while the original is locked away in a deep underground vault, I'm not particularly keen on Oridon's continued existence. Oh, and they added a talking dog because spit it out potion. There's also a subplot about girls not being able to go to the fencing team and blah. Why can't you just do a plot where someone like uh, Snow White's daughter wants to be on the fencing team as opposed to denying Mulan's daughter because, you know, the last person I would want to deny the children of getting on a sports team involving fighting is the daughter of two people who are accomplished war heroes. In an attempt to retrieve Mal, they get Ben and the gang to go to the island in disguise, and man oh man is this dumb. Look, the actor for Ben clearly can't sing in this movie, at least he sings better in Descendants 3, and he was auto-tuned to high hell. At least his body language was decent. 
Anyways, Ben gets captured. Shocker. Uma wants the wand. Shocker. They decide to 3D print the wand after Chad uses the printer, and Uma sees through the plan and has Mal test the wand on a dog to make it talk. Since the dog is previously talking because aforementioned truth potion, Uma buys the deception and then immediately realizes it because frankly she didn't hear the dog talk. Oh, and we got this whole rap battle before this big fight about how it's going down. You know that time where everyone was obsessed with Hamilton? Yeah, this is why we have this rap battle. Well, this rap battle between the VKs and Uma's crew certainly feels like they were trying to cash in on Hamilton and the cabinet debates. Look, I know I'm not the biggest fan of rap. I barely listen to it. I don't even remember the last time I listened to it. But with any music, you need to make it flow well, and how this rap battle flows is painful. It's, for a lack of a better term, cringe. Then we get the climax, at least the first climax. Yes, first climax. It's a lame fight scene on a ship in the docks. At least this fight scene look comparatively better. Yes, the fight scenes are really poorly choreographed. Like, I get maybe on stage this would work, but here, no. There's also plenty of CGI for a fight scene that is supposed to be relatively simple. Like, why are you CGIing the smoke bombs in this? But at least this looks better than the cotillion. Yeah, at the climax, the second one, it happens because Uma bewitches Ben and attempts to get him to bring down the barrier. Honestly, why is she evil? <laughs> like, the only reason this plan is bad is because she wants to bring down the barrier for everyone and let out all the villains, but honestly, if you just let out the VKs, that is just fine. True Love's Kiss breaks the spell. Then we get an unbearable CGI dragon. Then we get an unbearable CGI octopus. And they fight. End of movie. This movie is better than the first one. I'll give credit where credit is due. Uma is well acted. China and McLean can actually sing. And her motivations actually make sense. However... That's probably part of the issue with this movie. Uma is way more compelling than anyone else's subplot or plot. I just wish Uma's fight scenes were also done better, because the fight scenes are just awful. Ben makes me want to slap him with the smelliest herring I could find. Hell, maybe the smelliest halibut I could find. Because he is headache-inducingly stupid in this movie. So, your big gamble in the first film was getting the kids off the Isle of the Lost, and he flat out tells Uma in this film that he simply forgot about his big project, and he has the most stilted dialogue ever. If Uma fed him to a bunch of hyenas or slapped him with a halibut, I would not have exactly shed any tears for the guy. In terms of visuals, this movie is a step up from the first one, Really enjoy the waterlogged aesthetic of all the costumes. Honestly, it makes the cheap plastic and cheap levers look better. Am I the only person who feels like all the music is overproduced? Chilling Like a Villain shouldn't be a song that makes Ben go over the top showstopper. Overproduction isn't exactly what I want for a song about sneaking around blending in. If you want to blend in, have it more low-key and subdued. It's really jarring, especially Mitchell Hope's auto-tune. I mentioned the fight scenes being poor, that's because I think they're over-choreographed for the production they want. It feels like the sword swinging has no weight to it. Again, if this was a stage show, maybe I could see it as being more acceptable. But in a movie musical like this, no. Then there's the plot itself. It's a retread of the first film's, hey, you VKs, give me the wand, and I will use it to free everyone on the aisle. Except, I hated the first movie's plot. I found Maleficent was an unintimidating villain. So, I find Uma's plan way more compelling, I find her motivations more compelling, so I don't mind for retread as much in this one. Those are just my thoughts. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.